Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled, You Can't Win Them All, by Denver Morgan. Cargo, Barton speaking. Morning, Miss Hilton. Hmm, unsuccessful, eh? Who? Yes, I see. Thanks for calling. We didn't get the Cypress deal? No, nope, we didn't. Cut our price to ribbons, rock bottom, and British Air chopped us up. Uh, I hope they go broke. Oh, Frank, this leaves us in a delicate position. Delicate? That's the understatement of the year. Mac, we've got one aircraft out there, a beat-up DC-3. Every minute it's on the ground, we lose money. Oh, now calm down. Did you see the auditors? Oh, yes, they advise us to go into liquidation if we lost the Cypress Hall. Hmm. Two years, all for nothing. I tell you, I've had it. How much do we owe? Fifteen thousand. Give or take a thousand. Oh, I suppose they can freeze our personal accounts and all that type of thing. Uh, take about two months to wind up. I wish we'd never bought that deck. We should have stuck with a smaller job. No, Frank, it's no good being like that. It looked good at the time. I'll we'll just have to get jobs and pay our creditors. That's very noble of you. At least you'll be able to work. You know the last medical I had? I had to slip that doctor 300 pounds to pass me. High blood pressure. I'll never get into a big group. Probably end up flying idiot holidaymakers around. Blackpool Tower on a Sunday afternoon. Well, at least you don't have a family to support. Remember, I've got a wife and kids. Well, and what about me? My maintenance looks like the defense budget. You played around and knew it. You had a good woman in Carol. Oh, maybe. Oh, come on, let's have a drink. I... That all right, Mac? Oh, that's fine. A little more water, though. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, that's a stiff one. Well, here's mud in your eye. Uh, cheers. Mm. Let's see. Mac, remember that dolly down at... City morgue. Pay now, go later. Oh, sorry, I was joking. Air Cargo, Barton. Barton. That's it. Of course. Yes, we fly at night. Well? The green man down by the docks. Fine. Five o'clock. Look forward to meeting you, Mr. Grogan. And what was that all about? <laughs> Looks like we've got a job. Just said he wanted to meet us down at the Green Man. You know, that crummy joint on the wharf. Where does he want us to go? He didn't say. Tell us when we get there. Anyway, that bird I was telling you about. <laughs> you were right about this. This is a dump. Get your throat cut in here. You worry too much. Just keep smiling. Now, where's our man? Right here, gentlemen. Huh. There's a private room at the back. Follow me. Now, sit down. Grogan's my name. Michael Grogan. I'm Barton, and this is my partner, Alan McKenzie. Uh, I'll come straight to the point. Can your aircraft fly 1,200 miles non-stop? Oh, yes. Long-range tanks were fitted six months ago. A trip from North Africa to Ireland present any special problems? Hmm, none that I can think of. What are we carrying? That's my affair. Oh, no, no, Mr. Grogan. That's our affair. You get paid 10,000 American dollars for the trip. What you carry is my business. Take it or leave it. And when do we get paid? 25% when you leave and 75% when you arrive in Ireland. Will you take the job? No. No, it all we'll sounds... We'll take it. 
Frank, listen a minute. Just stop you? worrying, Mac. Mr. Grogan, I... I've got a vague idea what we might be carrying, so I think you'd better up the price. Make it uh, fifteen thousand dollars. Twelve and a half. Fair enough. But I want half when we leave, not a quarter. Very well. For an airline going broke, you strike a hard bargain. Oh, how come you know we're going broke? I've got my source of information. And let's not kid ourselves. If you weren't scratching, you wouldn't be here. Okay. Okay, what happens next? I'll contact you in about three days' time. You'll be given four days' notice before leaving. Is that enough? Yes. Ah, very well. When I come back to you, I'll let you have full details. Maps, routes to take, weight of cargo, the lot. You've got it all worked out? Yes, Mr. McKenzie. I've got it all worked out. I'm telling you, Frank, we should leave the whole thing alone. You know what we'll be flying? Russian arms for the IRA. It sticks out a mile. So what? If we don't fly it in, somebody else will. Stop trying to be a knight in shining armor. Those days are gone. Where do we land an island? I haven't a clue. You mean we're going to have to come in on some Irish bog? Well, you don't think we're going to go straight to Shannon Airport, do you? You done this type of thing before? No, but I was involved in a murder once. It was called the Second World War. Right, gentlemen. Your attention. Let's have a look at this map. We put down at Tripoli. Mm -hmm. Refuel, and then 100 miles east to Sidra Mm -hmm. to pick up the cargo. Night landing? No. You realize we're going to file a flight plan this end. What do we say? Uh, That's taken care of. Fly direct to Tripoli. You'll be on hire to a film company called International Cabra. Your aircraft is required for some aerial shots in a film we intend to make. At Sidra, we mask out your company name and the aircraft's registration. And will you be traveling with us? Yes, there and back. How long will we be in North Africa? Twenty-four hours. If my calculations are correct, we should arrive there about 5 p.m. Refuel and on to the disused American base outside Sidra. Uh, Loading should take about three hours. Take off will be 6 p.m. the following evening. Who's worked out the load? I did. I don't look so worried. Everything's all well within the limits of your aircraft. You can check it yourself. (laughs) You've certainly done your homework. In my business, you have to. What exactly do you do, Mr. Grogan? I'm in the supply and demand business. My clients demand, and I supply. Any further questions? Yes. What route do we follow on the way back? The entire trip will be undertaken over the sea. We fly over the Mediterranean through the Strait of Gibraltar, and when we're 150 west of the coast, turn due north. Where are we heading? We've selected some farmland about 60 miles northeast of Shannon International near Bantry. This is a night landing? Yes. Lighting on the strip will be provided by car headlights. You're absolutely sure there's room for us to get in? Positive. One thing I don't quite understand. What about a flight plan when we leave Libya? Isn't anybody interested? No. As far as anybody is concerned, you'll never have left Libya. Leave the details to me. Okay, so we clear the Africa in. What's to stop Ireland picking us up on the radar screen? Really, Mr. Barton, you surprise me. If you fly at a height below 200 feet for the last 300 miles, the land-based radar system will never spot you because of the Earth's curvature. You seem to forget the RAF have their early warning Shackletons in the air 24 hours a day. Ah, that might apply to Britain, but I doubt if the RAF are going to advise Shannon of any aircraft approaching the Irish coast. And, frankly, it's doubtful if they even patrol the area. And when we've delivered the goods to your friends, what then? You refuel, return to Sidra, reload the camera equipment, and back to London on a normal flight plan. Nobody will be any the wiser. Are you coming back with us to Libya? No, I'll have enough to do in Ireland. However, I'll complete all documentation for your final departure from Tripoli well before I leave you. Well, the whole thing sounds crazy to me. It's too dicey. Mr. McKenzie, at this stage of the proceedings, that's a pointless and tactless comment. 
You're not being paid twelve and a half thousand dollars for two days' work to do a normal scheduled flight. You must excuse my partner. He gets over anxious at times. Very well. It's settled then. Do this job properly, and I'll have more work for you. Six months, and you'll be out of debt. I, I'll meet you here tomorrow morning at five a.m. We should be in Sidra by five p.m. What's our ETA, Frank? About 1,700, all being well. You're not really considering going in for this business, are you? Why not? Been honest too long. Didn't get me anywhere, did it? I mean, this fellow Grogan, he thinks he's some kind of patriot. Patriot? Well, you've got to be joking. He's just a low-down gun runner. He doesn't care which side he sells to. His arms are going to pick up. Reckon they're stolen? No way. It's not the way the Russians work. They say they supply arms to anybody and get them to do the fighting. What do you think is going to happen to Ireland? Oh, I'm no politician. There's rights and wrongs on both sides. Hey, Frank, this twelve and a half we're getting, how are we going to use it? We'll spread it around amongst the creditors. Give us a bit of breathing space until the next job. You never know what Grogan may come up with. I didn't want to say this, Frank, but you make me... I'll have nothing more to do with Grogan. If you want to, well, okay, but count me out. You mean you'd quit on me? Oh, it's not a question of quitting. It's just it goes against the grain. Goes against the grain. You make me sick. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Now, look, Mac, we've been together now for two years. Maybe I'm getting a bit carried away. Grogan's not my style either, and I don't think I'm enjoying this. I'm not. Okay, but stop acting the tough guy all the time, will you? I keep worrying. Well, let me do the worrying. We should be about there. Hey, there on the left, the old base. See it? Yeah. Okay, let's take her down. Oh, it's like stepping out into an oven. I know. Leave all the talking to me. In fact, I'd prefer it if you both stayed with the plane. Suits me. See you later. Hey, Frank. Those trucks over there. Yeah? I suppose they're carrying our load? Yeah, it must be. Only half the stuff's here. I have to go into town. Be about two hours. I'll bring some food back. Is that the lot, Mr. Grogan? I, I'm sorry it took so long. They wouldn't work through the night. It made little difference. We had to stay here today anyway. Well, it should be dark in about 15 minutes. Yeah. If it's okay with you, Mr. Grogan, we'll be on our way. Aye, suits me. If all goes well, you'll be back here just before dawn tomorrow. This is it, Mac. Let her roll. Island, here we come. Aye, as long as we don't get shot down by the Arabs, the Spanish, or the Portuguese. You're forgetting the British, Mr. Mackenzie. and I were discussing you earlier on, Mr. Grogan. Really? What conclusions have you come to? Just wondered why you do it. You mean gun running? 
I just drifted into it. I was brought up on stories of so-called IRA heroes and the brutalities of the British occupation forces. You know, the usual propaganda. I soaked it up like a sponge. By the time I was 18, I hated everything that was English. Uh, then what happened? Uh, that was around 1942. You know what I did? I went to London for a look around, got drunk one morning, and joined the British Army. The British Army? Yes. Three years in the infantry. Even got a medal. Then what? Oh, nothing really. When the war was over, I couldn't settle down. I was just another dumb Irish nabby to dig up English country lanes. So I thought the only thing I was good at was war. And war taught me all there was to know about weapons. So I decided to go in for selling and marketing of the stuff. It just expanded from there, that was all. And the maiming and mutilation of women and children, is that all part of your proud cause? I have no cause. I don't make the rules. The innocent and the guilty suffer together. You have no cause to criticize. Remember, both of you are as much a party to it as me. I think I'll get some sleep. Good night, gentlemen. Go back and get Grogan, Mac. I want to talk to him. Okay. Yeah, Grogan. I'll try and watch him. You wanted me? Yes. Let's go over the sequence of events once we hit the Irish coast. Now, this point on the map, that's exactly where we're headed? Yes. Light signals, if it's clear. There'll be four flashes. Well, I take it there's no radio contact? None at all. Just coming low over the area once just to let them know you're here. If we don't get the signal that everything's okay, we jettison the cargo and go back. We'd have to take on fuel somewhere. Hey, don't trouble yourself. I assure you nothing will go wrong. I've done this trip before. Irish coast coming up. Stay at this height. We're ten minutes from destination. Right, Mr. Grogan. Do you recognize anything? Uh, can't see a thing. Over target now. Uh, there you are. Slightly to the left. One, two, three, four. That's a signal. They're there. I've got it. I see somebody's used their head. Flares down on the corners of the strip. Aye. Mac, let's take her in. Right. Mr. Grogan, get in the back. Strap yourself in the flight engineer's seat. Uh, make it a good landing. There's enough explosives in the back there to blow us all to kingdom come. Now don't worry. I'm not ready for a harp yet. Okay, we're lined up. Let's go through the checks. Gear down. Right wheel down and locked. Left wheel down and locked. Booster pump on. Flaps 30 degrees. Pitch 2700 RPM. Speed 100 MPH. Everything's looking good. What's our height? 200. 180. Okay, there's plenty of room. Grogan's been his thorough self. Is that you, Sean? And who else would it be? Everything all right. Would I be here if it wasn't? I've got 20 of the lads in separate trucks. Fine. Back them up to the plane. When each truck is full, give the man his destination. Who's driving the first truck? Me and you. If there's going to be any trouble, I want to make sure we get out first. Ah, you're learning. Let's move. Those leprechauns are jumping around a bit faster than the Arabs. I'm going to check they've got enough fuel for our return trip. Fair enough. I'll just tidy things up here. I'll be done in a minute. You're pretty organized, I see. In this game, you've got to be. You can bet your bottom dollar somebody is watching us who shouldn't be. Just hope he doesn't go to the police. The fuel, is it here? Now, of course it's here. Over there to the right. See it? Well, let's get on with it. You'll have to do it yourself. There's a hand pump with the drums. Get your mate to give you a hand. Michael! Michael, it's the police! They're on their way here. 
I wonder who talked. If I knew, would I be standing here? How long is it going to take him to reach us? As a precaution, we've blocked the access road. Slow him down a bit. We've got about 20 minutes to get clear. Hey, what's happening? Trouble. The cops. We've got to move fast. I knew this would happen. It's the chance we took. See the fuel truck. Fill up the left-hand tanks. Get somebody to give you a hand. I'm going to see Grogan. Right, right here, Mr. Barton. What can I do for you? The money. Let's have it. I was just about to give it to you. I like the way you operate. Here's $1,000 bonus. Thanks. Good luck, Mr. Barton. We're leaving now. Number one won't start. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That fuel we got, are you sure it was the right stuff? I don't know. Let me try. You're losing your touch. Let's turn this thing round. Hey, the lights come down the road. I can see them. They'll be gone before they get here. I hope. Frank, soldiers coming across the field there by the trees. Let's go, Frank. Let's go. Hey, they're shooting at us. Shut up. We did it. <laughs> we did it, Frank. <laughs> yeah, we made it, man. <laughs> I told you we'd do it. Just think of that. Three days work and we've got twelve and a half thousand dollars. I nearly got killed into the bargain. I can remember when I was in the RAF. I nearly got killed every day and I was paid, I think, seven shillings a day. <laughs> I feel like a new man. You know what I'm going to do when I reach London? What? Phone up Carol and ask her to come out with me. Yeah, hey, that's a good idea. She's a marvelous girl. I've always liked Carol. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to take a week off, go to the Norfolk Broads with the family, hire one of those cruisers, you know the type of thing, and just loaf. Sounds marvelous, my old boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the home stretch. Sleep for a week after this. How much longer? Just over the halfway point. See if you can get some music on the radio. Keep us awake. That suits you. Perfect. <laughs> Lovely night. Oh, it's good to be alive. Frank, number one's blown up. The prop's gone. There's a fire on fire. Take her down. Kill the flames. No, it's no good as spreading. I'll hold at this level. Bail out. Take the dinghy with you. No, Frank, I can't leave you. What's about you? Get going! Mayday. Mayday. This is George, Alpha, Bravo, Quebec, Tango. We're on fire. Our position... Frank is bundling back. I can't get near the door. The extra tanks have gone up. Frank! What were the names again? Uh, Frank Barton and Ellen McKenzie. Scots fellow, that McKenzie? Uh, you're very bright tonight, Sean. What's that one? English? Yes. You put the explosive under the right-hand engine, as I told you. Have I ever let you down? No. What fuse? About two hours. Ah, very nice. So they'll be well out to sea when the thing blows up. Not a scrap of evidence to connect us with them. Are them with us. The only thing that worried me is that all that lovely money you gave them. It's a shame to have it all scattered over the sea when I could have spent it. I shouldn't lose any sleep over it, Sean. It wasn't the real stuff. I 
That's a grand noise, Sergeant. Uh, tell me, who tipped you off? You'll never know, but you'll probably have 20 years in prison to work it out. That's a wicked thing to say, Sergeant. Forget it, Sean. You can't win them all. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal.